forecast, showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. Alaska is every cold water angler's grace land. I have been fortunate to fish in far off places throughout my life, but never took the time to explore the world renowned rivers of the 49th state. Many times in life, we make excuses for not being able to pursue what captures our imagination. Over the years, I have had countless offers to head north, but never made the effort. Finally, on short notice, plane tickets were purchased and we were bound for the Nushagak River and an adventure of a lifetime. after our float plane ride here up at Alaska Kingfisher's Lodge and there are a lot of fish here. Just coming in and landing here on the stretch of river we saw at least a couple hundred fish just in the shallow so we're gonna hurry up and unpack and start getting gear ready. Welcome to camp. Hollywood! Oh hey! Hey! What you got going on there? I ate it. Uh, coffee? Oh. I'm not allowed to have a good cup anymore. <laughs> How you doing dude? Long time no see. How yeah. was your flight? Awesome. We got a little bit of a run, right? Well, for this river, a little bit of a run. 10 minutes. I gotta ask you first question, man. Yep. We passed by a lot of good looking water. Yeah. Why are we stopping here? What type of structure are these fish holding to? These fish, like, we're so close to the ocean, they uh, they pick these little areas to stage. Okay. And Bob, I don't know, Bob's been fishing here so many years, he's, you know, we all learned this from him, but there just seems to be an area right here, especially going around all these islands, that one of the first places they stop when they come out of the salt water is right here. And they'll rest here for a few days, and when they're resting, they actually bite. Yeah. And then they bomb up another 50 miles and then who knows how far they go but because this river is fairly shallow for the most part i mean we're not seeing those big 20 30 foot deep holes so they just find little flats little benches where they can sit and rest and yeah no it's surprising how many fish in this river sit in steelhead water i mean we catch <laughs> you'll go through this 10 foot corner right here and you won't get them till you get down to four feet so hooked up right behind us are you ready <laughs> yes sir uh you tell me when to drop here drop him whenever wind's gonna slow us down a bit so Oh, I'm getting bit. <laughs> this is ridiculous, dude. <laughs> okay, I'm just getting my line out of the water, just dropping it down there just to get a feel for it. See the bobber start swimming. <laughs> I've been fishing in Alaska for, what, 15 seconds? Hooked up. 
Dude, it is kind of weird. I'm usually guiding. <laughs> I could actually land one. I saw the bobber go like this. I'm like, uh, really? I came tight. Just, uh, yeah, I guess he's there. <laughs> oh, there he goes. He's jumping. Jumping. These fish bite hard up here, man. He's not, he's not 20 pounds, but he's ripping. Look at this. I know he's got the current helping him out, but I mean, that's, I'm putting the wood to him. This is ridiculous. I know it's Alaska. I know there's a lot of fish up here, but Dan, this is, this is like a low return year too. Supposedly. Supposedly. The low water, what, what they think it's happening this year is the low water um, has pushed the kings to the middle of the river where the sonar can't count them. Gotcha. It's never been so low. This is just as good as fishing as it was last year on the year when there was 128,000. So I think they're counting them wrong because we've seen nothing but good fishing the whole time. Yeah. So supposedly low run. They have some shoulders. Yeah. Like this is 65 pound maximum braid, 30 pound leader, a nine and a half foot rod. I mean, I'm, I'm putting some, some power to them. Rolling, rolling, rolling. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, we, we catch plenty of Chinook back home. These have some power. That's actually a pretty bright fish. She is. Dude, that's my first Alaska King. Really nice. That is, yeah, that's mid 20s. Yeah, that's a beautiful one. Maybe high 20s. She's fat. First Alaskan King came in under 30 seconds, and it's a mid to high 20s, just beautiful, beautiful. gorgeous hand. Perfect. Unreal, man. Let's see if we can go do it again, huh? Yeah, we had to work really hard for that one. It's not quite that good all the time up here, but sometimes you got to wait five minutes. <laughs> five whole minutes. <laughs> yeah. Every one of the Alaska Kingfisher's boats that's flowing through the slot, every pass are hooking fish. We were in the water 30 seconds and got that one. We weren't even ready. All right, let's rebate. Let's go back. Right. <laughs> let's let's do it. Tell me when, boss. This is, this is pretty impressive. I mean, I've, I'm running a super short leader. Oh, I'm getting bit right now. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Dude, underneath the boat, man. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a river that's like the size of like the Clackamas. Come on, little guy. Right fish. <laughs> Get in here. It is? Yep. Beautiful Michigan River head, sea lice, and all. Yeah, so that marks in the head that it only goes that far because their certain mesh size is for a uh, sockeye out in the bay so they actually do a fairly good job at letting these kings get through they're not allowed to keep them so they just get caught right up to where you can see those marks and then they get out so it's surprising how many actually survive thanks girl dude awesome Sick. Yeah, sure. go. <laughs> yeah, another awesome. one two Spot. fish in total fishing time maybe a minute minute yeah. and a half yep your spots right into the boat just yeah just it. right off the, just bow, yeah. off the bow yeah it's <laughs> awesome <laughs> oh, there you go. Danny's on. Tell you what, you go ahead, I'll run the boat. A little one, so I should be able to manage him well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, little guy. More so than anywhere else I've seen, this is a very common size Michigan King. A lot of two year old fish, and I don't know. I think that's what keeps this run so healthy, is all the different age classes as compared to like, you know, most fall shooting for all four year old fish, right? Woo! The reason we fish those holes we do up there is because we know they stop there for the first time. A lot of these fish will actually swim right from the ocean to this hole we're fishing called Swallow's Nest. And then that's the first place they slow down is why they bite better. So all we need is another group of fish to show up or those ones to start biting again or whatever it takes, so.
<laughs> the technique that we're doing right now is essentially boondogging. So it's not even like bobber dogging where it's very visual, you're watching your bobber. This is more of a feel and you use your bobber as an indicator. So when we make our cast out, or even like I'm doing here is fishing pretty close to the boat, you're actually feeling the weight constantly tapping bottom. And then when a fish comes up and bites it, what you actually feel is almost like a rubber band. It just almost gets heavy. Just a little pull, 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 just slow, steady pull. But we've also had some bites here already today where it, they just throttle it. It's just an aggressive, almost like a spinner or a plug bite, just really hard and aggressive. But what you want to feel is that dead weight, heavy pull, rubber band, just constantly getting heavier and heavier, and then all of a sudden you come tight and the fish runs off and drives the hook in the corner of its mouth. Fish Field is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. We're gonna switch over to plugs here right now and I brought up, as is typical for me, way too many plugs, but we're gonna have some fun. Danny, what I want you to do is choose a color. I'm gonna choose one and then Sam, you're gonna choose one. Try a 4.0. Up here. Yeah, okay. The sun's out, so chrome. Okay. That one. Okay, that one's one of my favorites. It's fire starter. Perfect. There Got you go. It. Thank you, sir. Yeah. How can I go wrong with payday? One of my favorite ones back home. Beautiful. We'll see how these things bounce out with a single hook, too. So it's probably not necessary up here since there's so many tens of thousands of Chinook coming up, but anytime that you're running plugs, you want everything to be precise. So I like to start out by cleaning them up, and this is a new soap here from uh, Pro here, but what I really like about it is that it actually cleans off all the sand. Doesn't take much, just a quick little rinse. Okay, now the next thing I do is I look at the eyelets. I make sure the eyelets are all straight on top. The eyelet on the bottom is straight as well, along the center line, and the eyelet on the butt. Everything needs to be perfectly lined up all the way to the front. Most people pay only attention to the screw eye up top, but you wanna make sure everything is in line. What I like about it is that it'll just form almost like Play-Doh. There's two things we do when we're plug fishing to these hooks to increase your hookup and land ratio with these Chinook. So the first is the hook is in line with the shank. The point is in line with the shank like this. So the first thing we do, we're going to offset it just a little bit. That increases the hook percentage when they bite. So you offset it just to the side just a bit. Um, they grab onto it. It's a little bit turned to the sideways, it rolls into their mouth better. So the second part is the actual eye of the hook. We're gonna bend the eye right at the end inwards towards the point so that uh, the pull point when you're fighting the fish keeps the point of the hook in their mouth better. If it's turned in, it keeps the pressure point on the hook turned in and it increases the landed fish. So it's running like perfect. Oh man, plug bites. <laughs> So excited for a plug bite. Oh, Billy. Best seat in the house is up in the bow. You get to watch all the rods just get throttled. Oh yeah, you can see that translational bar that goes all the way across. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's right where we said it was going to happen, yep. too. Right on the inside. Inside rod, T50. <laughs> Alaska's unreal. Just pull up into a spot and just know you're going to get bit. There he is. It's actually a nice, brighter fish. It's a big chummer. Oh, it's a big chum. Big old chummer. Woo! Oh, now he wants to fight. Like, oh, 
favorite color from back home, payday. Wrapped with a fish nip. T50 thumping on the inside and bend it. See, that's a big old buck jump. Thanks, buddy. Beautiful chum on my payday, rats with fish nip there. Just awesome. So long, buddy. Thanks for playing. A couple good steel and style runs out of here. Dude, I know. Thanks, Danny. Yes, good job. Okay. So we first got one bite. How long that take? Uh, that was first 10 yards of that hole. Okay. So yeah, first 10 yards of that hole. First egg bite in 15 seconds, and first plug bite in minute and a half. Yeah. Slack line bite, he's on it still. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh. Dumps in. <laughs> double line up. Bite. Yeah. <laughs> that was total slack line bite. <laughs> oh, that fire starter again. There you go. Yeah, that was it. It's on that fire starter again, and Danny put that. Bloody tuna and yeast flavor on there. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. That's one of my favorite colors. Danny's just pulling us into this little back slew right now. We just finished up a phenomenal dinner. The light's starting to get low. Time to throw some top waters, not for salmon, but for pike. You get bored with the salmon up here. You have the Arctic grayling, there's trout, but then there's pike. And you even said that there was, what, a 50 inch hook here? Yeah. A couple nights ago? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a big northern pike. Ready? Let's do it. Pike, 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 pike. pike. I probably had, what do you think, Danny? Eight bites, 10 bites? Yep, 10 blow up. And I've had two on for a little while. Poor lures is getting beat up, but this is when you, what happens when you show up here undergunned. You've got a steelhead rod, 
with mono. If I had braid and a bass rod, I'd be pounding on them. But it's a little tough to get these big, heavy hooks in that real hard mouth of these northern pike. But tell you what, I can care less. I've always said if I knew if I took the hooks off a of lure, I would get more bites, I'd do it. I'm just having fun seeing these blow ups. You come out and you chase pike, you chase musky. They're called fish at 10,000 casts for a reason. We've been here five minutes at 10 blow ups. This is stupid. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Seeing that bite is just incredible. Come on. <laughs> oh, I'm off. Oh, he oh. caught me. One of two things happened. Either Cody didn't check his leader, which that fish wasn't hooked that deep, and we got a wire leader on there. Uh -oh. So you know what happened? We're unhooking that fish. I guarantee you this thing opened up. It's just it open. Opened. Oh, it's just open? Yeah. When just we open. dealing with him. Yeah, yeah we were unhooking the last fish. It's that guy right there, the one sitting right there in the weeds. That one. Oh, boy. All right, well, just lost that last one on my top water, which is a bummer. But when you take the top water off, you fish something just barely under the surface. <laughs> That's what you get. So what I put on there is just a uh, half ounce fish field head, the Chovy head with a fish field swim bait, it's a little five, six incher and first cast. Hey buddy, get out of here. There it is, just simple little Chovy head from fish field, little swim bait, blood tail, first cast. <laughs> I need to grab a rod and join in on the fun, buddy. <laughs> you back there? Huh? Dude, yeah. I got plenty of gear to grab a rod, dude. This is just fun. <laughs> it's amazing how many are actually back in one little cove. They all like yeah. hang out together, yeah. All, all I'm doing Thinking. is I'm just working this cove over on this grassland, and I'm just yeah. casting like 10 feet left, 10 feet left, and every cast, every other cast getting bit. Oh, man. Just, oh, man. They're so mad. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is stupid. <laughs> Contest. Who can make a cast without catching a fish? Okay, I'm going to switch up, but all I'm going to do is just basically use the same lure, but I'm going to add a little blade bait to it. Oh, look at that. Opened up again. They must be doing that when they They're bite biting it. it. They must be They're biting, biting it. They're biting it and opening it up. So this is what I'm switching up here to. Same concept, red head. This is the chovy head with just a chovy body on the back. Real supple, a lot of action. So what I did is I added a Hildebrandt. Uh, blade up top here number four so that way I can keep it up higher in the water column slow it down a little bit and throw a lot of wake with that little Hildebrandt gold blade little guy second cast though with that setup second cast with it but it's a little guy we've seen some hey, big that one, big that one works too yeah yeah that's fun but i, I know how big they are in here now <laughs> <laughs> yeah look at he opened that up again it's good i was gonna switch lures anyways thank you oh he stayed it again got that one on a rooster tail what what a surprise right Catch any type of fish around the world on a rooster tail spin. Northern Pike in Alaska is no different. So the original tail was this long. I got a bite. You cut him in half. <laughs> they razor sharp teeth, Pike. Yeah. Oh right there. Oh, that's a better one. Yeah, we're on doubled up. <laughs> 
that way to go, Danny? People travel around the world trying to find the best pike fishing. We came here to catch salmon. Let's do this home. <laughs> there we go. Double pike. Double pike. One on a frog, one on a rooster tail. I got off easy. Sick. Look at that thing. My first day in Alaska was coming to an end. The sun faded just below the horizon, but in Alaska, the sun never rests, nor shall we. The trip of a lifetime had just begun. <laughs>